Hi kiddos, today's first page is Friday. It comes from a book that Mrs. Garcia suggested. It's called Flipped. It tells the story from a boy and a girl's perspective and their names are Juliana and Bryce. I'll do my best to sound like a teenager for you. <laughs> okay, the first chapter is called Driving, Diving Under and this is from Bryce's perspective. All I've ever wanted is for Julie Baker to leave me alone. For her to back off, you know? Just give me some space. It all started the summer before second grade when our moving van pulled into her neighborhood. And since we're now about done with the eighth grade, that, my friend, makes more than half a decade of strategic avoidance and social discomfort. She didn't just barge into my life, she barged and shoved and wedged her way into my life. Did we invite her to get into our moving van and start climbing all over the boxes? No. But that's exactly what she did, taking over and showing off like only Julie Baker can. My dad tried to stop her. Hey, he says as he's cat she's catapulting herself on board. What are you doing? You're getting mud everywhere. So true, too. Her shoes were like caked with the stuff. She didn't hop out, though. Instead, she planted her rear end on the floor and started pushing a big box with her feet. Don't you want some help? She glanced at my, dire my direction. It sure looks like you need it. I did not like the implication. And even though my dad had been tossing me the same sort of look all week, I could tell he didn't like this girl either. Hey, don't do that, he warned her. There's some really valuable things in that box. <clears throat> oh, but what about this one? She scoots over to a box named Lennox and looks my way together again. We should push it together. No, 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 my dad says. Then he pulls her up by the arm. Why don't you run along home? Your mother's probably wondering where you are. This was the beginning of my soon to become acute awareness that the girl cannot take a hint of any kind. Does she zip on home like a kid should when they've been invited to leave? No. She says, oh, my mom knows where I am. She said it was fine. Then she points across the street and says, we live right over there. My father looks where she's pointing and mutters, oh boy. Then he looks at me and winks as he says, Bryce, isn't it time for you to go inside and help your mother? I knew right off that this was a ditch play, and I didn't think about that until later, but ditch wasn't a play I'd run with my dad before. Face it, pulling a ditch is not something discussed with dads. It's like against parental law to tell your kid it's okay to ditch someone, no matter how annoying or muddy they may be. But there he was, putting the play in motion, and man, he didn't have to wink twice. I smiled and said, sure thing, and jumped off the lift gate and headed for my new front door. I heard her coming after me, but I couldn't believe it. Maybe it just sounded like she was chasing me. Maybe she was really going the other way. But before I got up the nerve to look, she blasted right past me, grabbing my arm and yanking me right along. This was too much. I planted myself and was about to tell her to get lost when the weirdest thing happened. I was making this big windmill motion to break away from her, but somehow on the downswing, my hand wound up tangling into hers. I couldn't believe it. There I was, holding the mud monkey's hand. I tried to shake her off, but she just clamped on tight and yanked me along, saying, come on. My mom came out of the house and immediately got the world's sappiest look on her face. Well, hello, she says to Julie. Hi, I'm still trying to pull free, but the girl's got me in a death grip. My mom's grinning, looking at our hands and my fiery red face. And what's your name, honey? Juliana Baker, I live right over there, she says, pointing with her unoccupied hand. Well, I see you've met my son, she says, grinning away. Uh-huh. I finally break free and do the only manly thing available when you're seven years old. I dive behind my mother. Mom puts her arm around me and says, Bryce, honey, why don't you show Juliana around the house? I flash her help and warning signals with every part of my body, but she's not receiving. Then she shakes me off and says, go on. Julie would have tramped right in if my mother hadn't noticed her shoes and told her to take them off. And after those were off, my mom told her that her dirty socks had to go too. Julie wasn't embarrassed, not a bit. She just peeled them off and left them in a crusty heap on our porch. I didn't exactly give her a tour. I locked myself in the bathroom instead. 
and after about 10 minutes of yelling back at her that no, I wasn't coming out anytime soon, things got quiet out in the hall. Another 10 minutes went by before I got the nerve to peek out the door. No Julie. I snuck around and looked, I snuck out and looked around and yes, she was gone. Not a very sophisticated ditch, but hey, I was only seven. My troubles were far from over though. Every day she came back over and over again. Can Bryce play? I would hear her asking from my hiding place behind the couch. Is he ready yet? One time she even cut across the yard and looked through my window. I spotted her in the nick of time and dove under my bed, but man, that right there tells you something about Julie Baker. She's got no concept of personal space, no respect for privacy. The world is her playground and watch out below, Julie's on the slide. Lucky for me, my dad was willing to run block and he did it over and over again. He told her I was busy or sleeping or just plain gone. He was a lifesaver. My sister, on the other hand, tried to sabotage me every chance she got. Lynetta's like that. She's four years older than me and buddy, I've learned from watching her how not to run your life. She's got antagonize written all over her. Just look at her, not cross-eyed or with your tongue sticking out or anything. Just look at her and you've started an argument. I used to knock down and drag out with her, but it's just not worth it. Girls don't fight fair your hair and gouge at you and pinch you and then they run off gasping to mommy when you try and defend yourself with a fist then you get locked into timeout and for what no my friend the secret is don't snap at the bait let it dangle swim around it laugh it off after a while they'll give up and try to lure someone else at least that's the way it is with Lynetta and with the bonus of having her as a pain in the rear sister I was figuring out that this method works on everyone Teachers, jerks at school, mom and dad. Seriously, there's no winning arguments with your parents, so why get all pumped up over them? It is way better to dive down and get out of the way than it is to get slob clobbered by some parental tidal wave. The funny thing is, Lynette is still clueless when it comes to dealing with mom and dad. She goes straight into thrash mode and is too busy drowning in the argument to take a deep breath and dive for calmer water. And she thinks I'm stupid. Anyway, true to form, Lynetta tried to bait me with Julie those first few days. She even snuck her past dad once and marched her all around the house, hunting me down. I wedged myself up on the top shelf of my closet, and lucky for me, neither of them looked up. A few minutes later, I heard dad yell at Julie to get off the antique furniture, and once again, she got booted. I don't think I went outside that whole first week. I helped unpack stuff and watch TV and just kind of hung around while my mom and dad arranged and rearranged the furniture, debating whether Ampere settees and French Rocco tables should even be put in the same room. So believe me, I was dying to go outside. But every time I checked through the window, I could see Julie showing off in her yard. She'd be hitting a soccer ball or doing high kicks with it or dribbling it up and down her driveway. And when she wasn't busy showing off, she'd just sit on the curb with the ball between her feet staring at our house. My mom didn't understand why it was so awful that that cute little girl had held my hand. She thought I should make friends with her. I thought you liked soccer, honey. Why don't you go out there and kick the ball around? Because I didn't want to be kicked around, that's why. And although I couldn't say it like that at the time, I still had enough sense, even at age seven and a half, to know that Julie Baker was dangerous unavoidably dangerous, as it turns out. The minute I walked into Mrs. Yeltsin's second grade classroom, I was dead meat. Bryce, Julie squeals, you're here. Then she charges across the room and tackles me. Mrs. Yeltsin tried to explain this attack as a welcome hug, but man, that was no hug. That was a front line, take him down, tackle. And even though I shook her off, it was too late. I was branded for life. Everyone jeered. Where's your girlfriend, Bryce? Are you married yet, Bryce? And then when she chased me around recess and tried to lay kisses on me, the whole school started singing. Bryce and Julie sitting in a tree. K-R-S-S-I-N-G. My first year in town was a disaster. Third grade wasn't much better. She was still hot on my trail every time I turned around. Same with fourth, but then in fifth grade, I took action. What action?
action is Bryce gonna take? And in chapter two, the narration changes and now it's Juliana's turn to tell us what happened. So if you want this book, I have one, but Mrs. Garcia has a stack of them. Let's find out what happens when you read it. Come talk to me.